What's up guys, JV2017 here, and I am bringing you a new Fallout 4 tips and tricks video. And this time we are continuing my character build series with everyone's favorite video game assassin. Just a quick reminder guys, this is your hub for daily Fallout 4 content here on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and stay tuned on my channel for daily Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos. Today I'm going to show you how to make an Agent 47 Hitman character build, and more specifically one that focuses on using a silent sniper rifle and a backup silenced pistol to do all of the killing. Now I know Agent 47 has a large variety of weapons at his disposal and certainly not just a sniper and a pistol, however it's easy to spread ourselves thin by focusing on too many different weapon types with a Fallout 4 build, so I decided to focus mainly on the sniper. Additionally, there's no kind of fiber wire or choking kind of weapon that you know Agent 47 uses in the games and there's no real choking animation. There is a cool animation when you kill someone sleeping with the Mr. Sandman perk, which is something we'll talk about, but unfortunately you're not going to see a lot of the melee assassination kind of gameplay that you would see in Hitman within Fallout. Before we begin, I want to point out that this is my interpretation of an Agent 47 build. I'm sure there are plenty of other ideas out there, and if you'd like to share your version of this character, feel free to do so in the comments below. I tried to strike a balance between being true to Agent 47, but also trying to make this build viable, fun, and interesting to play in the game. It's super duper overpowered once you get to higher levels, so I hope you all will enjoy it. The three traits that I use to craft my Agent 47 build are first that he's an assassin. First and foremost, he is a hitman. He does carry out these contracts to assassinate people. And so that's obviously the biggest factor in determining what kind of perks we're going for and the play style that we're trying to achieve with this build. Next, he's stealthy. And obviously you wanna go undetected as much as possible when you are playing hitman. And Agent 47, in order to get you know the highest score, at least in the newest hitman game, you need to go undetected. And so being stealthy, being hidden is a big part of Agent 47, how he does his job, at least ideally. So a stealthy type character is obviously what we're going with here as well. Finally, he's an excellent marksman. He's an incredible shot. You know, he's able to pull off these ridiculous snipes from long distances. And so I added the sniper archetype to this build. Again, I know he's not exclusively known as a sniper, but I took this opportunity because there are no silver ballers within Fallout 4. There's no fiber wire, for example, that you can choke people with, like I said before. And so I went for the sniper with this build as well. Taking a look at the special stats for my Agent 47 build, we're going with one strength, nine perception, one endurance, three charisma, three intelligence, eight agility, and then five luck. And this is a 30 point build, which includes the one perception bobblehead early in the game and an extra point from the special book in any other category that you wish. So the plan here is really to focus on our signature perks almost exclusively and then kind of work into perception or luck based on your own choice. And since we're investing in perception, VATS will be viable at longer ranges. So that's really useful for luck if you decide to you know, go into luck even more. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing off a level 40 version of Agent 47. So this is very, very fleshed out. So you'll be able to see exactly how effective this character can be. Now let's talk about the signature perks that really define our Hitman Agent 47 build. And so with this build, I went again for a sniper. So we're going with Rifleman, Sniper, Lone Wanderer, Gun Nut, Sneak, Mr. Sandman, and Ninja. And we're gonna go and take a look at each of these perks individually one by one in the perk chart right now. Rifleman is obviously a perk we're gonna take with this build because we are sniper based. And so with non-automatic rifles, you're gonna deal more damage, 20% more with each subsequent rank and you'll get some additional incentives starting at rank two. You'll ignore 15% of a target's armor. That's gonna go up 5% with each subsequent rank. And then at rank four, you're gonna have a slight chance of crippling a limb, which is obviously helpful. And then at the final rank, you'll do double damage. And so Rifleman is hugely important because we are gonna be focusing on using a sniper. And speaking of which, Way down at Perception 8 is Sniper, another signature perk for us. It just gives you some incentives when you're using scoped base weapons. So if your weapon has a scope, you're gonna benefit with, by taking Sniper. And so you're gonna have improved control and hold your breath longer with the first rank, have a chance to knock down your target, similarly to what the Gauss Rifle did in Operation Anchorage in Fallout 3. If you guys remember, that weapon had a chance to knock down enemies, or actually it would knock down enemies with a critical. That's not gonna happen here, but you do have a slight chance of knocking down your enemies with Sniper. Then finally, plus 25% accuracy, excuse me, to headshots in VATS. So you're going to have a very high accuracy with headshots if you do indeed take Sniper. I totally recommend it since we are going to be using a Sniper. It just makes sense. 
Now we're gonna look at Lone Wanderer, which is a perfect perk for Agent 47. He doesn't really work with anybody. He does have a handler, but he is by himself. And so taking a companion, if you're trying to role play within Fallout 4, it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. And so Lone Wanderer is perfect for Agent 47. So if you don't have a companion, you're gonna take 15% less damage, increase your carrying weight by 50, that'll double at rank two. And then finally, you'll do 25% more damage with rank three, but you get that at level 40. That's way up there. But if you do decide to, you know, take your Hitman build and actually go through the game all the way to level 40, then you will benefit from Lone Wanderer. It's totally an awesome perk for our Hitman build. Gun Nut is also an awesome perk for this build because Hitman has, or excuse me, Agent 47 has a huge arsenal of weapons at his disposal. Granted, we are only fo focusing on the sniper and the pistol in this build, Gun Nut just makes sense, and you will need rank 4 in order to craft your own suppressor. There is the Tinker Tom Special, which is a hunting rifle you can get way before level 39, which is what is required for rank 4 of Gun Nut. You know, you can go and get that, but you definitely need to invest in the Gun Nut in order to make your weapons better. That's something that you can do in the games, in the Hitman game, so obviously you're gonna be able to do it in this game as well. Next, Sneak is hugely important. Obviously, you wanna be undetected when you are playing as your Agent 47. You want to be hidden, and we're gonna be sneaking around constantly. You'll see me sneaking around constantly in the gameplay, so obviously Sneak is a hugely important perk for this build. With each rank, you're gonna be a little bit harder to detect. You won't trigger certain kind of traps and mines, and then running will no longer adversely affect your stealth at rank four, which is at level 23. That's really, really early in the game. And it's obviously rank five is useful as well. If you're running away from enemies, you know, you did get spotted, you can run away and then stealth and you may be able to lose them. That is useful as well. Next is Mr. Sandman, which is a perk that used to be useless in my opinion, but in this game, you have this silenced weapons boost. You know, you get an additional 15% sneak attack damage with the first rank and you can kill an instantly, or excuse me, instantly kill a sleeping person with the first rank, and then you get this silence weapon boost with each subsequent rank, all the way up to 50% more sneak attack damage with a silence weapon at rank three, level 30. And so since we are silencing our weapons, it naturally makes sense to take Mr. Sandman. Finally, Ninja. Ninja is hugely important for this because you get that bonus sneak attack damage. At rank one, you're gonna get 2.5 times and all the way up to 3.5 times normal damage with rank three of Ninja. Ninja is an obvious addition to this build. We are taking sneak, we are using ranged weapons. So Ninja makes total sense and it's gonna help you take down a lot of the more difficult enemies and get so many one shots. You're gonna one shot so many enemies with this build. So Ninja is the last of our signature perks. Now we'll look at some additional perk options that either fit Hitman as a character, Agent 47, or you know they just help out with his build. So Locksmith is something, you can actually pick locks in some of the Hitman games, and so taking Locksmith kind of makes sense with the character, and also it's just useful to be able to get into certain locations, so you could take Locksmith. And then all the way at Perception 9 is Penetrator. This is something I actually did take when I got all the way up to level 40, and Penetrator is gonna allow you to hit enemies through certain cover. And so it's gonna decrease your accuracy, but you are able to actually hit them through cover. Pretty interesting perk and pretty useful. I've actually found it pretty useful for me when they're hiding behind certain things. You can just hit them through it, and it's pretty cool. It's kind of like FMJ from Call of Duty, and I know some of you guys are gonna cringe that I mentioned that in this video, but Penetrator is an interesting perk. I would definitely consider it with your Hitman build. And concentrated fire is also something you want to consider. I didn't actually take it all the way at level 40. You know, you do gain more accuracy as you hit the same body part over and over and over, but we are one-shotting a lot of enemies with this, you know, with this build. So concentrating fire is something you want to think about, but absolutely it's not necessary. Then we're going to skip all the way over to action boy. This is something I usually take on gun-based builds. It's just helpful. You know, you're, you're going to get some action point regeneration when you're fighting multiple enemies. If you don't happen to kill all of them very quickly, like you pretty much should be doing most of the time with this build, then action boy is definitely going to help you out in that scenario. Bloody mess, something I always, always, you know, recommend with builds. You're just gonna get 15% more damage in combat at the highest rank, or actually not the highest rank, the second highest. I'm not sure about the highest rank of bloody mess. I think that's kind of bugged. I really haven't found it useful, but bloody mess rank three is gonna give you plus 15% damage in combat. It's just some extra damage and it just makes sense, you know, to blow people up. I just really enjoy bloody mess, so that's something I usually recommend. Idiot Savant is something that does not match 
Agent 47 as a character. I think he's a very smart character. However, we are running a low intelligence build only at intelligence three. So if you want to capitalize, get the most amount of XP possible, then Idiot Savant is definitely the route you should go. Moving on, better criticals is something obviously that I took. You get some extra critical damage. I just like this for being able to one-shot enemies and take down some of those more difficult enemies like Assaultrons, Sentry Bots, Behemoths, Mirelurk Queens, you know, Mirelurk Kings sometimes are annoying, you know, Mirelurks in, in general are annoying, so having better criticals will allow you to one-shot a lot of those enemies, and it's just a useful all-around perk for damage. Critical Banker, again, I always recommend these luck perks in most of my combat-based builds. Critical Banker allows you to save critical hits, and as you rank them up, you're able to save more, and Critical Banker is just very useful for executing those criticals, and since we already took better criticals, those synergize very, very well together. Moving down the luck tree, Grim Reaper Sprint. Once you kill an enemy, you have a certain amount of chance of restoring all of your action points. This is great when you're fighting multiple enemies, so if you're in a situation where you're fighting a lot of gunners in the same room, you have that chance to restore all those action points if you decide to invest into luck. And then finally, Four Leaf Clover. Each hit has a chance of filling your critical meter all the way up. And so really, I don't have to explain a lot. These all synergize very well together. However, again, I'm at level 40 and I did not invest in these. I don't think I really needed them. I think this build is so overkill that these are just extra things to think about. If you decide to level up your character beyond 40, you could definitely go for these, but they're by no means necessary. Just some extra perk options for you to think about. Now that we have all of those perk options in mind, let's talk about what I like to call the perk roadmap, which is pretty much the game plan for which perks you're gonna take at the starting levels of the game. So this is just the first 10 levels. I don't wanna micromanage the character too much, but this is a great starting point for our Agent 47. At level two, I would go ahead and take sneak. Obviously, we're gonna be sneaking around. We wanna be undetected and hidden for most of the game, so establishing that kind of playstyle early is important. Next, I would take Rifleman. You're able to find a rifle pretty early in the game, and I think taking it at level 3 is early enough to where once you find it, you will have Rifleman and start dealing that extra damage with your weapon of choice with a rifle. At level 4, I would go ahead and take Lone Wanderer. Again, Agent 47 works alone. He only has a handler, and that's really, you know, typically the only person that he communicates with unless he's killing people or trying to, you know, deceive them or carry out his mission, whatever it may be. And so Lone Wanderer is a perfect perk for this build, so I would go ahead and take it early. Again, at level five, we take Sneak Rank 2. That's the earliest level it's available. I would go ahead and take it immediately. At level six, you should go ahead and take Ninja because you're gonna get that bonus you know, multiplier from your range Sneak Critical Attacks. Obviously, we've invested into two ranks of Sneak by this point, so it just makes sense to go ahead and take Ninja early in the game. At level seven, I would take Sniper. Again, this is a Sniper-based build, so obviously, we're gonna go ahead and take Sniper within the first 10 levels. It just makes sense at level seven. At level eight is Gun Nut. This is when you're gonna really want to modify your weapons more and more as you reach level 10. And so taking this perk at level eight makes sense to set yourself up for the rest of the game and obviously modifying every single rifle that you come across. At level nine, we get Rifleman rank two. So obviously we're gonna take it there and get 40% more damage at level nine. That's gonna be great, especially if you found a rifle that you're really comfortable with. Finally, at level 10, Mr. Sandman. This is really awesome because we're using silenced weapons. And so Mr. Sandman gives us that extra damage multiplier when we are sneaking and using silenced weapons. Clearly, the playstyle that we're going for is to be able to sneak around, be hidden like 95% of the time when we're in combat, and then use our silenced sniper to pick off our enemies one by one, just like in Hitman. And it's really cool. I love this build because you really are able to simulate pretty much what you're doing in Hitman. Obviously, there's not the crazy different, you know, ways you can kill people with like chandeliers and other objects just out in the world, but you are able to pick off enemies one by one, and it's very similar to the way you would do it in Hitman, or at least what I remember from the game that came out a few years ago. So obviously, we also have the silence pistol as a backup for close range combat. But honestly, if you're using VATS most of the time, like I would recommend that you do, you don't really need to worry about the pistol. Honestly, if you just run out of ammo, maybe you wanna use a pistol, maybe you're tired of using the sniper and just getting one-shot headshots all the time, I understand that you can pull out the silence pistol as well. The signature weapons for this build are the Overseer's Guardian and the Deliverer. And usually I would give you guys a large variety of options, but 
Honestly, these are the best two options, I believe, and they really just fit the character. So obviously, Overseer's Guardian is going to give you the two-shot modifier, shoots an additional projectile. However, it does cost a pretty good amount of caps. But early on in the game, if you're strapped for caps and you are playing this build and you want the Overseer's Guardian, sell all of the ammunition that you're not going to use. Ammo usually gets you a ton of caps, especially the minigun early in the game. You pick up the minigun with a ton of 5mm rounds, just go and sell all of them. You'll get plenty of caps in no time and be able to get the Overseer's Guardian very early. So, obviously the delivery you'll get from the Railroad, this gives you improved VATS hit chance with 25% less action point cost, which is pretty awesome. You can really just rattle off a bunch of silenced pistol shots, and the Deliverer is a perfect weapon for that. Additionally, if you decide to go with the Railroad, the Tinker Tom Special is also a great option for this build. It has a great Great legendary modifier and it's a silence hunting rifle so it's not a combat rifle a little bit different variation there but if you want to go after that that's definitely a great weapon for this as well i'm sure you guys are wondering how do you look so much like agent 47 how are you pulling this off well you do need a pc in order to pull off the signature appearance of agent 47 and so there are three mods that i use to pull his character together and they're all on nexus mods links in the description below First is Agent 47 suit by Drex. It looks fantastic. There's not much else to say. They've got the red tie, they've got the little clip on the tie, and it's just a black suit. It's perfect, looks just like Agent 47. Next, I use Gloves of the Commonwealth by Fading Signal, and I use these Silver Shroud gloves. So basically, you just spawn the gloves into the game and equip them, and they look just like Agent 47's gloves. Finally, I use the Agent 47 save game by Saint Brutal just to make sure my character looks like Agent 47. As you guys know, I'm usually not able to use the character creation system in order to make a really realistic character for my character builds. And so for this one, I just downloaded a save game, and Saint Brutal did a fantastic job on making Agent 47 face. Unfortunately, if you're not on a PC, we don't have mods on consoles yet, and I really doubt that we're going to have an Agent 47 suit just on consoles, because I think they are going to be kind of chosen and procured for everyone to use. But again, if you're on console, you can find some dark colored suits out in the world. They're not going to be as dark and, you know, you're not going to have the red tie just like Agent 47, but you can kind of get there if you do try. Since there is no companion section in this video, I'm just going to skip ahead to my final observations about this character. I had a lot of fun playing as Agent 47 within the game. It's really easy though, and so all of my gameplay that I record is on normal difficulty. That's because I assume that most of you guys are on normal, so I give you kind of, you know, what you can expect with this character build. It is so easy, it is so overpowered. Once you get to a certain level, you're gonna run up and pretty much bump into enemies with maximum sneak, and they're not gonna know you're there. It's absolutely ridiculous, and at that point, you know, it doesn't really matter what weapon you're using. Obviously, we're using a sniper, which is a very, very powerful weapon, but my point is this build is so, so powerful that I wouldn't, you know, recommend you guys play this on anything other than survival mode. It's just gonna get too easy once you're at a certain level, once you get the Overseer's Guardian, once you've, you know, invested in Sneak and Ninja and Mr. Sandman, you're just gonna be mowing down enemies. If some of you guys are on PC, I would definitely recommend some of those, you know, difficulty enhancement mods, you know, that make the game even more difficult on survival than it already is. You'll get more of an authentic Hitman experience, especially if you ever play the Hitman games on the highest difficulty. It is very, very difficult. And so you can kind of simulate that within this game with some of those mods. So I'd like to know, after watching this video, will you play an Agent 47 build? Is this something you're interested in? Does it look, obviously it looks powerful enough. Does it look like something that you'd like to play within the game? And also, how would you build your Agent 47? Would you give him more different kind of options for weapons? I know that's something I had to kind of, you know, deal with because we have limited, you know, special points within this game. We have 30 pretty much to start out in the beginning, so you have to be worried about that. You don't want to spread yourself too thin, but let me know what you guys think. And also, suggest a new character build for me to cover in my next build video. Share all of your thoughts and comments below. All right, guys, today I showed you how to make an Agent 47 Hitman character build in Fallout 4. And next time we will cover more Fallout on my channel, so stay tuned for daily Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos. And remember that this is your hub for Fallout 4 content on YouTube. If you learned something new, remember to hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe for more unique weapon guides, build guides, and general tips and tricks videos. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.